Does anybody else out there have a lens in their toolkit that they absolutely love and is considered one of their favorite lenses, but they never get a chance to use it? For me, that's the Sony 135mm f1.8 G Master. Now, this might sound crazy, but this is one of my favorite lenses that I own, and I might regret buying it. That makes sense. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are seeing me on screen for the first time, welcome. I'm fairly new to the YouTube space and I want this channel to be more so geared towards helping you guys scale up your video creation business and you know, just giving you guys some insights on what I've done to kind of scale my business from zero all the way up to making over $100,000 a year. So if you're looking for more business type content, I will be making more videos like that in the future. But before I get into all that, I wanna do a lot of gear reviews and just review all the stuff that I currently have and own and kind of help you guys make some decisions on whether or not certain gear is worth it or not and what you absolutely need to make and scale up your video production business. So without further ado, let's talk about this Sony 135mm f1.8 G Master lens. So let's answer the question, do I regret buying this lens? The answer is absolutely no. Uh, I'm not even gonna hold you guys. I don't regret buying this lens whatsoever because like I said in the intro, it is one of my favorite lenses that I currently own, if not my favorite lens, but I just don't use it as much as I intend to or had planned to. So I just wanna give you video creators out there some insight if you're thinking about picking one of these bad boys up and just help, hopefully helping you make some buying decisions on if you really need it or not, or if you can go with something else that I would actually recommend. Now real quick, for all you photographers out there that shoot anything like portraits, uh, weddings, sports, anything along those lines. I definitely recommend this lens. This is definitely something you need to add to your toolkit. You don't even need to watch the rest of this video. Go pick this thing up. You will not regret it. Now for you video creators out there that are like me, do you need this? Well, that kind of depends on what you're shooting on a consistent basis. Now I say consistent basis because if you're someone that's gonna look to pick one of these up and you only need it a couple times out of the month, year, whatever, just for a few shots here and there, Buying it is not something that I would recommend. If you're, if you're somebody like that, it's not gonna be using it quite often as you think you might. It might be a, it might be a valuable option, just rent it when you do need it to kind of save yourself some money because this is an expensive lens. It comes in at $2,100 US and, and that, is, that is not cheap. But for you video creators out there that are very much into fitness videos, wildlife type videos, sports, and all kind of things like that, you might be able to use this more often than I do just because when you're shooting, you know, for example, fitness, shooting in dark gyms a lot of the times, um, the 1.8 aperture can really help you in that regard. You know, cause, yeah, that's the, one of the reasons why I love Prime so much is because you can be able to stop down to 1.8, 1.4, 1 1.2, all that type of stuff. And being able to have a, a, a telephoto Prime lens to help you capture those you know intense moments, the facial expressions, getting tied up on their muscles and things like that, helping the the fitness client fill out a little bit more in the frame is always a positive, especially when you're shooting fitness videos because they want to kind of appear bigger on screen. So having a telephoto lens with the compression of a 135, it's gonna help them add a little more girth, I should say, to their body to make them look and pop off the screen that much more. And as for sports, obviously you're gonna need a longer lens, especially if you're like shooting from the sidelines, you're gonna want that telephoto type lens to help give your viewer a better sense of the energy throughout the game, um, the emotions of the players, and just different type of things like that to help better tell your story to keep your audience captive in your videos. And obviously when you're shooting wildlife, you're not gonna wanna be super close up to these wild animals trying to get pictures and, and video and things like that. So you're gonna wanna need, probably you're gonna need a little bit longer of a focal length than this if you're shooting wildlife, someone like in the 400, 200 type range. I'm not much of a wildlife photographer, videographer, but 
if that's something you're into, obviously you probably would know that you're gonna need a really, really long focal length for that. So I really don't even need to say that. But other than those things, I really don't see much of a need to use a 135 focal length when you're shooting video primarily, just because in a lot of situations, you're not gonna have the room, nor you're not, you're not gonna have the flexibility to use something like a 135. Like I said, unless it's really like a specific type of shot where you need to get really, really tight on your subject to kind of gather the emotions of their face, you know, get the teardrops or whatever the case may be. Then again, you can still use other lenses that are underneath the 135 focal length to kind of capture something like that because you will be in a controlled environment if you're shooting stuff like that. So I really don't see much of a need to use the 135 in many video type of scenarios, especially if you're doing documentary work or real estate commercial type work. And if I would ever grab this lens on a shoot, I'd you know, probably be hindering myself more than it will be helping at that point. So now a better lens option for you creators other than the 135, if you're looking to shoot more of a tight slash medium type focal range is the 85 millimeter F 1.4 from G Master. Now using this lens, you'll have plenty of use case scenarios out of it. Like I said, you can use it for a medium shot. You can use it for a tighter shot and being able to stop down to 1.4 instead of 1.8, you'll get that extra flexibility of low light capabilities. And I'm just a really big fan of the 85 millimeter focal length. Um, you can use it. It's really great for B-roll type shots, detail shots, anything like that that you kind of need out of it. So yeah, that's my take on the 135. Super quick review um, for you video creators out there that are looking and on the fence of buying this thing. I would say caution yourself dig a little more, do a little more research. And another option would be, like I said, that 85 millimeter focal length. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's better in low light situations, and it's about $300 cheaper. So for me, the 85 millimeter would be a better option. And the 85 millimeter is something that I don't currently own myself, but I will be looking to add that to my toolkit in the near future. So once I get that in hand, I will come back do another quick review on that lens. But I did get a chance to rent it for a wedding that I shot and it pretty much sold me on the fact that the 85 millimeter is better than the 135 millimeter just for video creators in general, for me anyways, just because I would use the 185 way more than I would use the 135 in any type of video situations. So that's been the video. Appreciate you guys checking this out. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those future videos that I've got coming up with. Again, a lot more business type content on the pipeline coming in the future to helping y'all scale your business to make more money and be more efficient when you're buying gear so you don't have to waste a ton of money like I did. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I've been all in my bag. You've been all in my business. you be all in your feelings. I've been all in them trenches. I've been all in my bag